My name is Claire McLaughlin. I'm a science teacher here at Brunswick County Early College High School. So the lab that we did today was getting students to think about the different types of energy and how energy is transferred and what energy does and what energy is. So today we are going to do an energy pre-lab. We're going to perform an experiment and then we're going to analyze our results. I really have fun when I'm teaching my classes. All of the activities are really deliberate. They seem chaotic. <laughs> but there's always a point to them. You know, and, and I, the students don't know what the point is at the beginning. They, they're always getting to something and they don't know where they're going, but I know where they're going. And so they kind of muddle around in the dark. And one thing that we really focus on in the science department here is that it's okay to make mistakes. We want you to make mistakes. Mistakes are a vital part of science. We're just learning about energy and how it's transferred and absorbed. And I tell my students to fail early, fail often, and fail cheap. I want you to ask a question now. And it, you might feel silly asking the question because maybe you think your neighbor knows the answer, but I want you to make that mistake now. So that's how a lot of wonderful and important things have been discovered because somebody was willing to take risks. So, but what's happening to the energy? Where did the energy start? And then where did the energy go? And then where did it, the energy go next? Science is important for everyone to learn because it applies to everything that we do. So math is not isolated. Economics issues are not isolated and music issue you know that things in music are not isolated everything relates back to science I've heard it said that math is is the main language of the world but I see everything relating back to science inquiry discovery experimentation but then beyond that the actual way that things work how do things work it's science I, I love science because um, it's just interesting to find out different things about what's going on in like around you. I like um, science because you get to see the world differently and think about things like just walking in the hallway you get to think about the way the lights move. Kids are naturally curious and that's what science is. It's being curious and following up your curiosity with questions and experiments. I, when people tell me they don't like science I can't I can't understand it. Science is so exciting and fun and it's everything is science the whole world is figuring out how the world works is is science i like science because it's interesting and you can understand how things work and why they work at one time science instruction was very much about learn the facts memorize the facts test on the facts the traditional way of teaching science is you do a lecture and then you do a lab to kind of prove the lecture. And really, that's kind of dumb, because why are you proving something that you've already been told is true? Oh, and what's the, what's the thing that we've learned about in terms of interference? Now it's very much more based on application of concepts and mastery of concepts learned. Standards are presented. Teachers find experimental ways, lab using, through the using labs for students to actually learn the material so that they can apply it to the real world. Now we do the lab first and we have the kids figure out the knowledge from the labs. Okay. It's a lot more fun and it's a lot more exciting and it, it gets, it builds a much um, broader and deeper skill set. So instead of being good at kind of taking notes and regurgitating, you have to be good at working in teams, you have to be good at critical thinking, you have to be good at problem solving, you have to be good at um, putting a bunch of pieces of data together and, and figuring out the whole from that. Okay, that was cool. So what, what, are they, what color are these? I like science because we get to do different types of experiments and hands-on stuff and I like doing the hands-on things like that. I have seen students react to a hands-on approach in a number of ways. Mainly, when we first started doing more hands-on and modeling, students were very frustrated. They wanted the teacher to give them the answer. What kind of energy? Um, <laughs> okay, let's go with that. What do you mean by that? It's exciting for me to say, you know, to keep pulling and trying to get them to just keep asking questions and questions and never, I'd never give them the answer on just why, how, why, and they're used to it by now, but at the beginning of the semester it kind of freaks students out, <laughs> you know, that they're used to teachers just kind of giving them the answers and that, that doesn't happen. They, they really have to work to get the answers. She doesn't tell us the answers, she tells us how to do it. 
but uh, we had to get the solution, figure out how to do it, and what's the, what's the outcome of it on ourselves. Well, students who have science backgrounds are going to tell you that many of their other courses become more relevant. What I see is putting science in the ninth and the 10th grade and really saturating the ninth and 10th graders with science instruction is actually strengthening all the critical thinking in all the courses. It's be making the instruction much more relevant so the students then, it builds on their natural curiosity as well because now it's relevant. When we're doing something about graphing or um, data collection, we'll say, oh, we just learned this in math. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll hear from the math teachers that they say, oh, we just do that in science. That makes sense now, or that I can apply that in this way. So they're able to take these skills of taking risks and use them in, in their other classes. For me, science education in high school is our opportunity to show students the world beyond high school and the world beyond Brunswick County, but obviously I'd love for them to bring it back here. So we want to expose them to as many scientific experiences as possible, whether that's in the physics or the biology or the chemistry. And I see us as being that stepping off place to career and college readiness in science. As a school and as teachers, we've done a lot of professional development about what are the skills and the attributes that you need to be successful in a, in a science, technology, engineering, or math career. The big thing that we've done so far is we did STEM Speaks. And it's specifically, we have STEM professionals come and give short dynamic presentations. So 10 minute long presentations, we have five presenters, so they present and then we have interactive sessions. That gets them fired up. They want to talk to somebody that's doing this day to day. They want to find out what's out there for them. And oftentimes what I see is students are suddenly exposed to something they never knew existed. We got feedback last year and the most common feedback was, I had no idea all of these jobs were available in Brunswick County. So that was awesome. I want to be a pharmacist and science is going to be very important in this job because I need to create medicine. <laughs>